Hello everybody, in this video I want to continue on the uh, join discussion we've been doing in these last couple videos, so be sure to check those out. Well, I've been talking a little bit about not null columns, basically columns that aren't allowed to have no value, and that can cause some confusion when it comes to joins because you might get results you don't expect. And I'm just going to be explaining that just a tiny bit more, this video will be quick, so if you already understand it, go right ahead and skip it if that's what you wish. Alright, so I'm going to be going over an example of a user comment system. So basically you're going to have a table with the users and then you're going to have something such as a comment table. And you might have a table such as video or blog or whatever you're commenting on, but that's out of the illustration for now, don't worry about that. Well, in this example, we have some columns that are labeled not null. And what this means is that you're not allowed to have them to where there's no value in that row for that column. So for example, if in comment we had comment ID and then we had user ID and we gave it a column characteristic of not null, well, what is that going to do? That's going to basically say that every single row within this comment table has to have a user ID associated with that comment. And that would be the person who posted that comment. Now, the user on the other hand doesn't have to post a comment. It's a one-to-many relationship and the user does not have to post a comment, but a comment has to be owned by a user. That's important to know. So there's three real possible options of joins that we could do on this table. The first is an inner join. I'm going to put these in caps because it's probably just better to do that. Now the inner join does not matter which one is left or right because it's going to take the middle of both of them. So the positioning of your uh, tables within your uh, query of the select statement does not really matter. All that matters is that you're using the inner join. What is the inner join going to give you? And the inner join will give you uh, all of the users who have comments. That's because if a user doesn't have a comment, it's not going to be, in, his ID won't be in the comment table, and he'll be left out. Uh, if there's a comment that doesn't have a user, well, then it would be left out too, but that's not the case because it's not null. All right. The other option is a left outer join, and I'm going to go into uh, place, places in a second. Left outer join, and then we could put the comment on the left. So if you need help position if you need help thinking about that in your head, switch these two tables around. But I'm not going to do that because that's part of the, the illustration already. We're good. All right. The other option, well actually let's talk about what that's going to do first. Left outer join is going to give you all of the comments and then give you the associated users who have posted those comments. So every single comment will be included. So the return result will be all comments and associated users. Okay, now think about this though. These things are actually going to give you the same exact thing. That's because if you do an inner join, it's going to give you all the users who have comments. Okay, so it's going to take you all of the users who have a comment, put it in there, and then it's going to take all the comments that have a user and put it in there. You hear that? All the comments that have a user, all the comments that have a user. So these are going to give you the same result. So just understand that. The third option is to flip the left join, the, the tables that is. So we got a left outer join with the user table on left. Okay, now what is this going to do? It's going to give you all of the users and the associated comments from those users. Now, let's talk about, so we're going to have, it's either, a, it either includes them all or excludes some of them. So basically, if it includes all of the users, I'm going to label it with a star. If it only includes some users, I'm going to label it with an X. Same for the comments. All the comments is going to be a star, some of the comments is going to be next. So, users who have comments. Well, only some users are going to post comments, so that's going to be X on the user end. But, 
all of the users who have comments, that's going to include all of the comments because all of the comments are labeled as not null. So every user posted a comment has a row within the comment table. So it's going to return them all. So it's going to return them all on the user end. That's a star. <laughs> now left outer join with the comments on left returns all comments and associated users. All the comments, so all the uh, on the uh, comment side, it's going to return them all, but the users, not all of them, just part of them. Now left outer join is going to return all users and associated comments. So the first one is some users, all comments. The second one is some users, all comments. The third one is all users and all comments. This, that's what you kind of need to do when you're trying to plan out which join you need to use. Go through all the possibilities with that join and just write them out. So you see that these two are actually the same. This one is just a tiny bit different and that it includes all of the users. So you may be wondering, well, which of these two should you use? Well, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. If you, if you wanted to return all of the comments, don't worry about whether it's not null or not. Just use a left outer join with the comments on the left, and then you're guaranteed to have that. You don't have to worry about whether it's not null or not. So that's what I would do. If you only want the users and the comments included, and you don't want to include any comments that don't have a user, which is never going to happen, then you do a, a inner join. So what you do is you just think and pretend all the comment, all the columns are nullable or they don't have to have a value. And then you plan your joins around that and it can still work the same way. If that's what you'd like to do. Otherwise, you can just plan out like this and realize you can use either one of these and it's going to work out fine for what you want to do. So yeah, okay, I guess this video was a little longer than I thought. And it was uh, kind of complex and confusing, so... I apologize if it was a little too pointless or just was counterproductive, but in the next video we will be discussing something new, so thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.